This is Don with Virtual 360 Images. This is part of a series I've started on using the iPhone to take better pictures. The iPhones and the Androids and the rest of them have gotten so much better with the cameras built into them today than what they were five years ago, ten years ago. I was asked to do primarily uh, iPhones. If you watch the series uh, just prior to this, it went over settings on your camera and how important they are. And I'm going to go a little bit into that. Some of the settings on the camera itself to take the pictures and then uh, how to edit your pictures uh, right on your phone. So you don't always have to take your pictures off the phone to edit them. The editing tools and stuff have gotten so much better. I'm going to start with uh, settings. Uh, Emil, who was from the iPhone photography school that uh, did the previous one, uh, he went through settings, but there's a couple settings I think that uh, would help if uh, we just kind of covered them a second time. You go to your settings, scroll down, until we find camera. The first setting he talked about was the grid lines. Most of the phones are coming with the grid line defaulted off. The grid lines are the two parallel and two horizontal lines on your screen, which we commonly call the rule of thirds, but does an excellent job to help you line it up. Even you should be using the rule of thirds, but at the same time, if you're trying to line up the uh, horizon and or buildings or anything in that scene, the grid lines really help you out on that one. Format. I'm going to tell you right now, use the most uh, compatible. You can use the high resolution one. But at the same time, that high resolution is going to put it into a Apple format. And then also, it also puts it into a JPEG called JPEG, which is somewhat of a Apple. And, but at the same time, what it does, it, it will take two pictures, one in a H, H E I F and one in a JPEG, uh, JPEG instead of J. PG, JPEG. Uh, so it'll store two pictures all the time. Those pictures are not compatible with other software. So if you airdrop or pass that on or bring it down to your PC or something or try to pass it on to somebody in that format, if their phone or if their computer isn't uh, compatible with uh the, that style of JPEG or the HEIF, you can't open it. And it's frustrating. My sister did that to me last weekend. Uh, we were out on the beach and we took some pictures and she took some pictures and she says, well, here, let me airdrop it. And I'll talk about airdropping a little bit. Uh, so she sent the picture of Jan and I over to my phone. It wouldn't open. So that's, that's part of the problem. Use the most compatible. That's in your standard JPEG. And the other one is Auto HDR, which is your high defini definition. Leave that off and keep normal photos on. Those are a couple of real quick uh, settings to remember. Make sure your phones are set on those. We're going to go back. And we're going to close that back out. We're going to go into the camera for just a second. I apologize for the picture. We're not outdoors where I could have done uh, something a little fancier as far as outdoors. But I just wanted to go over some of this real quick. You can do some stuff ahead of time. I don't recommend it. In the upper right-hand corner, you have three gray dots. If you press those... Look down at the bottom, and you have some different filters. 
if you slide that across, you can see that you can change the color in it. It's a filter right on down to black and white. I don't recommend using these filters. I'm going to put it back to the normal. If you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner, when the filters have been turned on, you'll see the three little circles are different colors, red, green, and blue. When it goes back to normal, if you want it back to normal, merely just hit it. See, we've got it back to the original and then we'll take it back to the normal screen. Also notice in the screen, uh, the grid lines we talked about in the settings. The other thing that I really suggest when I turn mine on, because it catches me every so often, is in the center you have a little uh, yellow circle, which is called Live On, Live Off. If I press that once, Now you can see that the yellow circle button in the center has gone back to white. The reason for this is if you leave it yellow, it's on, it'll take three pictures every time you push the button. If uh, you're taking sports or something like that, it might not be a bad position to put it in. But if you're just taking still pictures, turn it off. You don't need three pictures every time. I believe in taking pictures, but different pictures. Uh, I believe in taking four or five pictures when I take a picture, but it might be a little different position each time. You'll also notice that the HDR has got a slash through it across the top, and uh, that's because we turned it off in the settings. When you hit the little bowl of lightning on that upper left-hand corner, you'll get, that's for the flash. You can either have it set for automatic set for on or set it for off. You'll notice mine normally is off. I leave it off most of the time. Uh, unless I'm doing something up close where I need the extra light, otherwise I leave it off. If you leave it on, sometimes it flashes when you don't want it to, and then other times you think it's going to flash, and it won't flash. So I just leave it off all the time. It doesn't take but a split second to uh, switch it. To automatic or on. Okay, back on the regular screen, down at the bottom, a couple just quick notes. Uh, you have the one X in the screen there that will uh, zoom for you. You can also zoom with your fingers by spreading your fingers in and out. Uh, photos, that's normally where I leave it. And also, if you go over where it says square. I am not a big, big fan of square. There may be some applications, and I've seen some applications that have been framed as square. But 90% of the time, if I want to take that picture and have it printed, trying to find somebody that will print a square without distorting it is a problem. Most everybody prints 4 by 6 and if you've done it square, that's what's going to happen. I had that uh, with a bunch of pictures that uh, I took down at the beach not paying any attention that I had it on square. And when I looked at them when I got them home, I had to recrop them all to uh, 4 by 6 And when you recrop them, you also take the chance of cropping something off at the top and the bottom. So... Uh, those are those are a couple places that I really support is use photo only use square if you know exactly what you're doing with it the other one you can see there is panoramic you can play with that one portrait you can play with video you can play with the video also one other quick note I'm going to make at this point is the shutter which is the white button at the bottom is I will show you in the class, but you can push either one of the volume up or down and open and close the shutter by pushing on it. 
So if you got the phone sideways or something like that, it might be easier to push that. It'd be more, more of a feel that uh, you have on a regular camera. The other one is, too, that I do use uh, once in a while with the phone is if you've got a headset plugged in, it's an Apple headset with uh, the adjustment volume up and down. All you have to do is hit that volume up or down, and the shutter will flicker. So if you want to hold the camera down in your lap and aim it off towards somebody, and they don't, and they think you're listening to the radio, you're snapping pictures. So, uh, but that is another way. It's another way if you're going to use a holder on it, and you want it to be steady and don't want it to shake, is use the iPhone uh, earplugs or bugs uh, that has that on there also. Also keep in mind, too, uh, down in that lower right-hand corner, the little camera with the arrow uh, circle in there with the arrows on it, that switches the camera from the front camera to the back camera, which is used mostly for selfies. Keep in mind, if you're doing selfies versus the front one, the, the camera on the front is a higher resolution where if you flip it over to selfies, because selfies are primarily close-up pictures that you're taking of yourself, those pictures don't have to be a higher resolution because they're close-up pictures. But if you try, I've seen people that will put it on reverse, turn the camera around, and then take pictures. They're not getting a good quality. So, Okay. What we're going to cover right now is going to be how to edit some of your pictures. We're going to go through this fairly fast, so uh, if you have questions on it later, I'm going to take you to my photo album. And we're on an album which I took last weekend at Fort Myers Beach at the Sandcastles. I took all these pictures with the cell phone. I didn't even take a camera along with me. But I'm going to show you that you can crop, change the tint a little bit on them. This was the, as you first came in, uh, which kind of introduced you to the, I think, uh, the casino is one of the hosts for the sand sculptures. This is what your edit screen is going to look like. There's a number of things down the, mostly down the right-hand side. We talked about filters earlier. If you'll see on the right-hand side, the three little balls that are uh, gray and white. If I push on those, you'll see that I get the same set of filters that I showed you earlier on the camera if before you take the pictures. But you can change those after you take the pictures. And as I slide those down through, you'll see the different colors, and you'll see right on down to the couple different shades of the black and white. And if you want to change it back to the original, I believe I come back up to here, press on it. That's back to what it was originally. Now we talked a little bit about cropping. This is their cropping, which is the uh, lower box on or lower symbol on the right hand side, which is the squares uh, with the arrows going around. You can actually tilt it. I don't want to do that, but I can uh, bring the sides in a little bit. Once I do that, then I can move the picture around inside. I think I didn't get it big enough. Let's see if I can bring it out a little bit. And I can move that picture around within my box. So you can crop on here. Not the best job of cropping, but that's where, that's where I've got it. Okay, we got that cropped. Not I could probably have done a little better job on cropping, but I didn't. Now we can do some auto-focusing. More or less contrast. 
I go down to the next one. It's got the plus and the minus on it. It'll let me change the exposure on it a little bit. Another setting you can change a little bit. We can go down to highlights. Make it a little darker, make it a little brighter. Shadows. I can take some of the shadows out. Add some shadows back into it. Contrast, which I use a lot of contrast when I'm working on photos. Like so. And you've got several others. Brightness. Black points. So there's a number of settings you can do on here. I'm going to click on cancel on this one. Discard. I'm going to go back to my album a minute. There was another one that I had. Let's see if I can find it. I thought was a good example. And I think this one probably is. It's one of our, uh, it's my nephew and niece. Uh, it's their little girl. Uh, on Halloween this year. I thought it was a good example because I can lighten that picture up a little bit. Uh, exposure. See how, orange it, see how orange it is. And we can bring that back out a little bit. Highlight. Shadows. Contrast, if I can take a little bit of the contrast. You can see, if I change the contrast, it sharpens up a little bit. Brightness, almost too much brightness. Let's add a little back. A little bit too much there. Might have lightened it up away a little bit too much. Then I can come over here on the right side to where it says crop. Move that down a little bit. It'll bring that up like that. I can move her down. Remember the rule of thirds. If you're going to center somebody, put their eyes across the top line. In the rule of thirds, they really recommend you putting the person along the side set of lines. Get them in that upper third corner. out in there and we're going to call that good so you saw what that picture looked like before that's what it looks like now cancel discard that's what it looked like before I started editing it so you can add it right there on your phone and uh, go ahead and forward them save them Move them into uh, Apple, into the cloud, share them. You can email them from there. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea of editing. There's a number of things we can do as far as editing. I got a lot of junk in here too. I need to go through all these days and clean house. Here's another one that uh, real quick, and then I'll get out of it. This is my son, my daughter-in-law, and our granddaughter, Nina. But uh, we can come in here, and it's a little on the dark side. I know they took it with their cell phone. They took it at night. I think she was leaving for her homecoming. Highlight, sharpness, contrast. I said I always like contrast, which sharpens up quite a bit, as you can see. Brightness, I need to brighten that up a little bit. Might be a little too much, but that'll give you an idea. And then also, if you want to, we can also crop that a little bit. And bring it more in and based on them. So I hope this helps a little bit on editing. Uh, editing's been there, and uh, people will say, well, I take my pictures, but I have to download them in order to edit. 
you can edit. The editing tools have gotten better and better. There is also one other editing tool I think is on here. Uh, it's called uh, Lightroom. It's a free download. I don't have the login right now to get into it, but if you've worked with uh, uh, any of your uh, Adobe software, Lightroom is one of the more powerful ones that's out there. It does everything. It's on a phone, but it does it much more professionally. But that is also uh, a free download, I know, on the Apple and I think also uh, on the Androids. So that's another one to think about. Hopefully this will help you in the future with your pictures. Go out, take lots of pictures. Edit them a little bit. Share them. Have a good day. Enjoy photos and taking pictures.